Hi, my name is Miss Tolnitz, and my goal for this demo is to show you how you can create a production-ready workflow using notebooks as a starting point. And of course, I'm going to use Azure ML for that. My colleague handed me a couple of notebooks that take a trained GPT-2 model from Hugging Face and fine-tune it using books from the Greek poet Homer. I'm going to show you how to organize his code into components, how to connect those components into a pipeline that registers a model, and how to deploy that model using an endpoint. We'll take a look at how to create Azure ML resources using the Azure ML Studio UI, and I'll show you three ways to create resources using the CLI from within the terminal, using a GitHub action, and using the Azure ML extension for VS Code. Let's dive right in. I added the books that my colleague gave me to my project. Notebooks are great for experimentation, but Python files will make it easier to refactor his code into components. So I went into each of his notebooks, clicked on export, and save the notebooks as files, ending with a .py extension. Then I analyzed this code carefully and decided to separate it into four files. The model notebook turned into the hugging face and register model files, and the trained notebook turned into the fine tune and process files. Let's look at the process file. The purpose of his code is to read the data source and split it into training and validation sets. You can see here that it takes as argument the source folder for the dataset, a training validation split, and the paths where we want to save the training and validation outputs. Notice that I gave it some default values, so if I run it locally, I expect the original data to be under data homer, and the validation and training data will be saved under data processed. Let's run this code. As you can see, a data process folder is generated as expected and contains the training and validation sets. Now that I have my code nicely refactored into separate Python files, I can create an Azure ML component for each of those files. An Azure ML component is really just a resource that encapsulates a reusable piece of code with inputs and outputs. I'm going to create resources using YAML files like this process.yaml file, which as you can see, contains the arguments that we saw in the code file. I have two inputs, a folder with a data set and a training validation split, and two outputs, the paths to the training and validation sets. There's one more thing I need, an Azure ML environment that specifies all th these dependencies that this code relies on. I already have a YAML file with the configuration for a good training environment, which I named Base HF Transformer Train. I just need to register it with Azure ML, which I'll do using the CLI with an AZML environment create command. Now let's go to the studio and verify that our environment was created. And it was. Great. Now that I have an environment created in Azure ML, I can add it to the YAML file of each of my components. I could use a CLI command to create these components, but I would need to use four commands each time I make any change to these files, and that would be tedious. Well, I have a better way. I created a GitHub action that watches for changes to Python and YAML files within the components directory and executes the AZML component create command. And the coolest thing about it is that it increases the version number of the component automatically. Let's see this action at work. I'm going to check in the changes to my four components. I'm going to make a pull request from my brand to main, merge into main, and the GitHub action kicks in. I'm going to speed up this bit so that we can focus on the interesting parts. And when it's done, we can go to update modified components and see that the GitHub action detected changes to these four files and executed AZML component create commands for each file. And we can see here that the fine tuning component was registered with version 18. Let's confirm that these were created in the Azure ML Studio. Okay, here are the four components we created and the fine tuning component has version 18 as expected. 
Remember that one of the inputs expected by the process component is a folder containing the original data. Well, my data is on my local machine, so I need to create a dataset to make it accessible from the cloud. I could use an AZ ML command for that, but let's use the UI this time. I'll go to datasets, create dataset from local files. Let's call it Homer and choose file for the dataset type. I'm going to click next, then browse to find the dataset folder, then click upload, click next, and then create. This creates a new dataset. Let's verify that it contains the files we want. Yep, here they are. Now that I have the dataset and all the components registered in Azure ML, my goal is to connect them into a pipeline that fine tunes a GPT-2 model with my dataset and registers the resulting model in Azure ML. I could create a pipeline using a YAML file and the CLI, but for this demo, I'm going to create this pipeline using the designer right in the studio. I'm going to select Compute Cluster. I'm going to pick a pretty fast cluster and I'm going to give the pipeline a better name. You can see here on the left that I can add datasets and components to the pipeline. I'm going to start by dragging the Homer dataset, which I created earlier. Then I'm going to drag the four components you've already seen onto the canvas. This one splits the dataset into training and validation sets. This one gets the trained GPT-2 model from Hugging Face. This one fine-tunes the GPT-2 model, and this one registers a fine-tuned model with Azure ML. We get a little warning in two of our components. That's because they expect me to specify some inputs. For this component, I need to say that I want a pre-trained GPT-2 model from Hugging Face. And for this one, I need to specify a name for the output Azure ML model. Now let's connect them. The dataset returns a folder path, which my processor component expects. The processor returns training and validation data, which connect right into the fine tuning component. The hugging face component returns weights, a tokenizer and a config, which our fine tuning component expects in that order. And the fine tuning returns fine tuned weights, a tokenizer and a config, which the model registration expects. Now I just need to submit this pipeline. I'll choose the NLP tests experiment and submit. This takes a few minutes to run, so let's fast forward to the completed pipeline. You can now go to models and see that model GPT-2 was created. Nice. Let's go back to the designer and click on the fine tuning component. I'm logging this metric, which tells me that the throughput of this component is 84 training samples per second. This is really good, but I have another fine tuning component already registered that might do better. Let's try it. I'm going to replace the current component with a new one, reconnect everything and rerun my pipeline. One thing to notice right away is that my first two components are reused. Only the component I replaced and the component that depends on it are rerun. This saves me a ton of time during development. I'm going to skip forward in time once again to the finished pipeline, and I'm going to look at the throughput of this new component. 216 train samples per second. It's an improvement of more than 150%. How am I getting the speed up? I'm giving you a sneak peek of something Microsoft has been working on, which is still in private preview. It's a new Docker container that brings together a collection of tech that accelerates deep learning training. Now that I have a pipeline that registers my fine-tuned model with Azure ML, I'm going to show you how to deploy that model at scale with a managed endpoint. The first step in deploying a model is to write a score.py file, like the one I'm showing here, that takes in some user input and generates a prediction using the trained model. This file needs to have an init function that the Azure ML calls when the endpoint is first created, and a run function that Azure ML calls each time the endpoint is invoked. The code is ready, and now I want to create an Azure ML endpoint so I can deploy this code at scale in the cloud. An endpoint can have multiple deployments. For example, if you want to do A-B testing, you could have some of the traffic go to one deployment and the rest to another.
but we're going to keep it simple in this demo and create a single deployment that takes all the traffic. Once again, you'll have many options to create Azure ML resources. You could use an AZML command in the terminal or the Azure ML Studio UI, but this time I'm going to show you how you can use the VS Code extension for Azure ML. I'll go to the Azure icon on the left taskbar and click on the plus sign to create an endpoint and select Managed Online Endpoint so that Azure manages the compute resources. I'm going to call it Homer Endpoint. And you can give it tags, but I'm going to delete them to focus on the essentials. I'll save this as endpoint.yaml. Great. Next, I need to create a YAML file that configures a deployment within the endpoint. I'm going to click on this plus sign and choose Managed Online Deployment. I'm going to specify the model that we tuned earlier using a pipeline and the location of the score.py file that I just showed you. I'll give it an inference environment that I already registered, a machine type, a name, and the name of the endpoint that we chose in the previous YAML file. I'll remove the scale settings for now. We'll be talking about scaling later. I'm going to add one more setting. I can press Control Space to see all properties available to me. Then I'll start typing, and here's the property I'm looking for, instance count. I'll set it to two so the deployment can ha handle more traffic, and I'll save this file as deployment.yaml. I'll go back to my endpoint file and create the Azure ML resource by right-clicking and selecting Azure ML execute YAML. If you look in the terminal window, you can see that the VS Code extension automatically runs the right AZML command to create the endpoint. Awesome. Now I'll do the same for the deployment. I'll right click, select execute YAML, and the command is executed. This takes a few minutes, so I'm going to fast forward. Okay, the deployment is created. Let's go to the Azure ML Studio. You can see that our endpoint is here, and if we click on it, you can see that it has a deployment called Blue. We want this deployment to handle 100% of the traffic for this endpoint, so let's update the traffic to 100%. We're ready to test the endpoint. We'll go to the test section and type a prompt. This conference is super awesome because... I click the test button to see how Homer would have completed the sentence, and we get our result. This conference is super awesome because it is so much more than just a meeting of delegates, the people and their thoughts on pressing issues of our day and age. So true, right? <laughs> okay, great. Once you've been running your endpoint for a while, you'll want to know if you're using your compute budget wisely. Let's go back to the details tab. You can look at metrics for the endpoint here, or you can look at metrics for a particular deployment, which is what we're going to do. I want to visualize CPU memory utilization percentage. I'll zoom into the interesting part. And in the same graph, I also want to visualize CPU utilization percentage. This graph will be useful as my endpoint gets more traffic. To make sure it can handle a lot of traffic, I can change the auto scaling settings. Let's click here, choose custom auto scale, then scale based on a metric, and then add a rule. Here's the rule I want. When CPU utilization is larger than 70%, I want to increase the instance count by one. I'll add this rule, which shows up here, and I can save it. My endpoint is fully set up now and ready to be used in production. Let's look at the Consume tab to see how we can invoke it. Here you can see the HTTPS address and the key you need to access it. You can now invoke it by doing a simple POST request from your app's code. I'm going to show you how you can invoke it using a curl POST command in the terminal. Here's the prompt input I'm going to pass to the endpoint. And now I can execute a curl in the command line using the HTTPS address and key you saw in the Azure ML Studio and the JSON file with the prompt. And here's the result. Very cool. It worked. In this demo, I showed you the entire process for turning your data science notebooks into production-ready code. I refactored the notebooks into components,
connected them into a pipeline that creates an Azure ML model and deploy that model using an online managed endpoint. Thank you for watching.